decide closer to the date, but they probably won't decide until Friday whether they'll cancel it or not. Okay? Um, who are we still missing? I know that um, Telma and Valkyrie are not coming. Are you missing somebody else? Jose Ness? Valdir? Jose Ness is also at the doctor. Okay. Jose Ness is here. Jose she had an appointment. Oh. Okay. From last week. Okay. Yes, I know that. Valdeir? Valdeir's coming. Okay. Oh, welcome. Okay, so today we're going to talk about some fun tasks for grammar. Hopefully, today will be interesting. We'll also talk a little bit about those five pages you had to read about motivation, kind of how that works into what we're doing. Um, so our warm-up today is called Baby Do You Love Me? Okay. So I think we're going to have to form a couple smaller circles uh, after I explain how it works. Okay. So you stand in a circle and one person is in the center. Okay. Now you could change the words on this for it to be whatever you want, but this is always funny and entertaining. So the person who's in the middle walks up to someone on the outside of the circle and says, baby, do you love me? And the person must respond, baby, I love you, but I just can't smile. And they cannot laugh or smile. <laughs> if they laugh or smile, they become the person in the center. Okay. Now, you may do anything with your face or voice or body, but you may not touch the other person. Okay, so that's the rule. You can make silly faces, you can roll your eyes, you can do a squeaky voice, whatever, to try to make the other person laugh, but you may not touch them. Okay? Um, so let's get um, let's get these three tables to come up and make a circle in the front, and let's get those three tables to go make a circle in the open space in the back. Okay? One volunteer will be in the center. Here's your script. If you laugh, you're in the middle. but I just can't But I can smile. change the verb. You, oh. sure, if you want to. Sure, verb. if you want to use another verb. Um, if they laugh or smile, they must come in the middle. <laughs> you already, too easy to go. Okay. No, no. Can you dance with me? This is good.
this out. <laughs> That's it. You can just switch. Yeah. Yeah, you laughed. Oh, no, you, laughed. <laughs> you laughed right away. <laughs> You can do anything you want when you're in the center, but no touching. exactly what they needed to do. Um, and I put one up onto the website so that you can see an example. So I'm, I'm not sure where the miscommunication came in, but you have more time to complete it. It's not a big deal. Um, and where are we? I don't know if Valkyria sent you. She did. Yeah. Yeah. OK. So if when you go under, um, Student generated materials. Okay. Um, Thais, Giovanni, Carla, Telma, and Sueli. Um, boy, I have to add Sueli in there. Did um, a trip to Delaware. Theirs is up there as an example. Okay, so that you can kind of look and see. 
um, what still needs to happen. So whoever sent me the copy of the project, I emailed that person back if there was anything that still needed to be done. Um, but I think it, it was, some of you weren't sure how to do the tasks or that you had to do the tasks. Um, so just take a look at that so you can see what it should look like, a complete idea for the project. Um, and you have time still to work on that. And luck hopefully, this does not feel like busy work. Like the whole point is that these are all things you can then actually use. And theirs is very nice. So even if you didn't get the I still need something else from you email, it's a fun project. So I suggest um, taking a look at what they did. And my comments are over there as well. So um, you can kind of see if I added any extra ideas or, or things like that. Um, and that will come back to your group as well when it's finished, okay? So definitely take a look at what they did so you can see. And if you need to do more, you'll know because I sent your group leader an email, okay? Um, moving back though, I do want to know just a little bit about how you felt about the group project work this weekend. So if you could just get out a piece of paper and very quickly tell me, number one, did each group member participate in creating tasks and ideas? Um, if not, why not? Number two, did you perceive that the group had a leader? It may or may not have been the person who sent me the email. Um, and number three, did you feel that the workload was distributed equally or did it seem like one person did most of the work? Um, this is not going into the grade this time. Um, it's just for my information purposes. Okay, so if you could just please answer those three questions on a piece of paper and I'm going to take them from you, okay? Right now? Right now. I'll give you about five minutes, okay? Each person, each person, one per person. One for each person, okay? Uh, can I put only one, two, three, or do I have to write? No, you do not have to rewrite the questions. Okay. You can just put one, two, three, and the answers, okay? So just have each person answer these three questions. That's it. It's not a right or wrong answer, it's just how you felt about the way the group work went. Mm -hmm. You do not have to rewrite the question, just write the answer.
guess who we'll have to be the name of the person. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have specified that. But. Yeah. 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 Free only. Yeah, this shouldn't be too hard. It's basically, did everybody do something? That's what I want to of the chapter um, focused on just a couple of, of basic ideas and principles. Um, I'm hoping this one wasn't quite as hard to understand. Okay, good. <clears throat> Mostly because I cut out the whole first part of the chapter that was a lot of theory. Um, so the three motivational principles that they talked about were there's more to it than reward and punishment. Um, student motivation has to be maintained, so you can't just get them motivated at the beginning of the year and hope that it will somehow last all year. Um, you have to keep working on it. And it's the quality that counts. And they specifically pointed out how trying to be 
a super teacher can lead to burnout. Um, is there anybody who, before coming here, do you know what it means to feel burned out? Okay, you're exhausted because you've expended a lot of energy on your class, maybe because that energy feels like it's not getting returned to you, like it's going into a giant black hole vacuum sucking machine. Um, is there anybody who, who feels or felt burned out before they came or at any point in their teaching career? You have felt burned out. Yeah, okay. So, so you know, I think it's important, thank you, to, to focus on quality over quantity. So, you know, we can't really think about doing this at this level every single day because it will kill you. Um, but, you know, trying to be selective in getting your students engaged and involved. Um, did anyone have any questions about the principles? I think they were pretty basic, but if you have questions, I'm simple. simple. Good. And then moving on, from those three principles, um, we t there was a section about the learner's future vision. And the question that I sort of thought about here, based on what you have told me, is how can you cultivate or grow a learner future vision when your students see no future? So who struggles with that? Their students don't see any way out of their current situation. Okay, a fair number, okay? So they can only see their current reality. It's gonna be really hard to get them to see some other point of view or some other reality for themselves. Um, is it realistic, do you think, for your, to believe that your students will be in a situation where they have to learn English because it's necessary to their life? Sure, okay. So that's good. It's good that you think English is necessary for them to learn um, because your conviction kind of drives them, helps to drive them a little bit too. Um, because it's hard to cultivate this future vision in students who see no way out, um, sometimes the other components then become even more important um, because many of your students may not be able to visualize a future that is different. And that might, you know, and sometimes you can feel guilty encouraging them too much to believe that they can. There's, there's like a balance. Um, so the other things sort of in the absence of that can become more important. Um, the focus goes more onto those things because this may not be much of a reality. I think this is talking about a very specific type of student in a very specific situation that many of you are not experiencing. So the things that do become important then are the learning strategies, okay? So um, we're gonna do a quick little improv about the individual learner level strategies and this is what they pointed out. So they have um, wedding appetite. What does that one mean? Yeah, this, this word and uh, I'm very confused about the wet. Wedding, this wedding one's appetite is in like a phrase and it's like an idiomatic expression um, that means getting you excited about something, okay? So you give them a little taste in order to get them interested, okay? So that's wedding, wedding your appetite. In this case, I mean, to exit learner's curiosity. <coughs> Yes, to get them curious about, to learn more about whatever it is you're trying to teach them. It's the same as to arouse. Arousing interest would be another way to put it, yeah. Okay. Expecting success. How is that a strategy? What does that mean? Uh, I think we, we, we always have to, to put in their minds that they will need in a situation or another to use them. Because uh, nowadays, if you don't speak English, or uh, not only English, any other language, mm -hmm. then you, you have, like, when I have a, a better perspective of life, you have to speak at least one language. 
so so this would be like outside success, future future life success, which I think is related more to that learner self idea. But what about in the classroom? How what does it mean to expect success in the classroom? Uh, set some activities that they will feel confident and they will success. Yes. So give them activities that um, at least some where you can pretty much guarantee they're going to be successful at it. So building in some of these activities kind of allows them to grow their confidence a little bit. Yeah, okay. Relevant materials. What is that one about? Uh, first, I think you have to check what are the students' goals and based on their interests or expectations you create materials. Yes, yes. So based on their interests, you choose materials. Interests and goals, yeah. And they have to in the context, according to the class, to the students, the agents. Okay, so, and taking those interests and building them into the context of the class, good. We have to be careful. Before we give them a lesson, we have to plan this based on this. Right? Yeah, um, ideally, yes, we, could, we plan the lesson yes. based around this. Yeah, relevant materials, good. Um, you know, there are some teachers who still use handouts that they made in like 1982. I'm pretty sure those are no longer relevant materials, right? So as long as you're adapting and changing, you're, you're okay, probably. Break monotony. What does it mean to break monotony? Sometimes we create uh, one activity, they have fun, and they enjoy a lot, and we persist in using the same. <laughs> ah, because he, they loved the, at first, so I will continue, and sometimes we need to. Try Diversify, yeah, it's present different things. And, and that is tempting. You find something they love and you're like, ooh, that works, I'm gonna do it every day. But eventually then, that becomes less interesting because you've done it so frequently, right? So that's uh, good. And we can see that some uh, teachers use the same methodology all the day. Let's mm -hmm. suppose if one teacher uh, discovered one, one kind uh, of think or way to teach mm -hmm. is going to use mm -hmm. only this mm -hmm. material every day and uh, the students they become sad. They get tired of it, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Something <coughs> I found interesting here, they suggest sometimes even moving the furniture. Okay? Yeah. Moving the chair, the the, the, the position mm -hmm. the yeah. position of the desk. Mm -hmm. okay. Just in order to chant a little. Yeah, sometimes that just something that simple can give like a new feeling to the to the class, right? It's like when you get a haircut, you know, all of a sudden you feel a little different. Same with changing the classroom, right? It makes that gives them a new perspective even. Mm -hmm. Good. Interesting tasks should be pretty self explanatory. Mm -hmm. Give give them interesting things to do. Um, increase self confidence. Help the students. Help them that they can do it the lesson. Because some day, some of them they don't believe it. they are able to do it. Okay, so giving them, uh, making them feel that they're able to do these tasks and activities, good. Which kind of goes along with yeah, expecting exactly success a little bit, yeah. Good. Positive social image. What is this one? Oh, that's the problem that I have. With yes, students. it's the problem that a lot of you have. Yeah, to be, to be exposed too much. They don't want to fail in front of their classmates and they don't want to look stupid in front of their classmates. They're afraid all the time to make yeah, so this also goes along a little bit with the increasing self-confidence and expecting success. So how can you give them something where they can feel confident enough to do it in front of the others? Um, and starting with these kinds of activities at the beginning of the year, um, that where they're kind of almost guaranteed success, um, can make them feel more comfortable the rest of the way through. It's like setting the stage. I feel like I'm talking really fast today. No. Okay. <laughs> um, too much coffee again. <laughs> Creating autonomy. What is that one? What is autonomy? Independence. 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 Yeah. Okay. Ability to do tasks and on your own, right? Uh huh. Is it is it in this this topic? When example, I know that he's hard working for. Uh, teachers when we do it, but I like uh, to give the choice to my students to decide the theme of the project. Mm -hmm. It's hard work because one group 
for one class I have one team, mm -hmm. team uh -huh. and with another I'm not into deeper material. So allowing them to make decisions, yeah, 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 to guide the learning process a little bit. Good. Yeah, okay. Have to step out sometimes so we can yeah, sometimes taking a back seat as the teacher and, and letting the students lead a little bit more. Good. Um, increasing satisfaction should be pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, and making grades motivational. How does everybody feel about that one? Everybody loves grades? Good grades. Good grades. Okay. Um, do you feel like your students work to get the good grades? Some. 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 Okay. You're always only going to have some, and that's yes, okay. But they want the grades. They, they want the grades. They want. So they sometimes need the um, they need the oh, grades they need, or they need to, to get the year to pass the year. To pass the year. Okay. So in a sense, they have to achieve a certain yes. grade in order to go further. Yes. Okay. But they might do the minimum. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They okay. Try to they try to do the minimum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So sometimes it's it can be really hard to get away from that kind of thinking, um, especially when it's built into the bigger system. Um, but sometimes it can be helpful to take actual numbers off of things and just get them used to seeing things like comments with no quantitative, you know, number. Um, and at first they'll say what's my grade? And you just explain to them, well, there is no grade. You're just supposed to learn. And eventually, they do come around to seeing that as helpful. Yeah. Um, but it can take a little while. And some of them still, every single time, say, I don't, I don't get it. So what's my grade? Right? In, so yeah. So what I want you to do in um, little groups is you're going to do um, a quick improv. Does anybody know what improv is? Improv. Nope. You would think it comes to improve, but it's from improvisation, which is what? What is improvisation? Something you don't prepare. Something you don't prepare beforehand, and you do very quickly. Okay. Um, so we'll go. We'll do. We're going to get in like small groups, but you can do it at your table. But I think I'll have the two of you join somebody else because you're just two, unless you want to be by yourself. Um, and you can choose whichever strategy you would like. And I want you to act out or create a short scene in which maybe one person is the teacher and a couple are students, where you demonstrate how you might, one of these things might look in the classroom. OK? The whole scene should be no more than one minute. This is like a role play. Okay? Decide who's going to be the teacher, who will be the students, and you will demonstrate what that strategy looks like in the classroom. Okay? You have three minutes to plan. Do you understand what you're doing? Yeah. All right, go. I'm going to move over here so that you can see the skits when they perform them. Two minutes left to plan? 
to speak something. Uh, what's her name? Four days first. And what's her name? Like a line. They talk like four days So trying something new. Excellent, thank you. Who would you like to see next, ladies? Okay. You want to see? The, okay. Nice job. Nice job. Wait for me. All right, the next group is ready. So your attention up front, please. Hello, good afternoon, guys. How are you today? Fine. 
Okay. Uh, remember the list of adjectives we studied yesterday? Yes? Okay, so let's stand up. Let's make a circle here, please. And look at each other carefully. Look at your classmates. That's nice. Now I'd like you to write one characteristic, one quality that uh, describes better your classmate Tatiana. Please, go. Relating the materials, which one were you? Did you have in mind? We focused on increased self-confidence. Increased self-confidence. Okay, good. Who would you like to see next? Let's go. Oh, okay. Great. I love that everybody's so willing to volunteer today. <laughs> Monday. <laughs> You're all awake now. Okay, audience, are you ready? Okay. Hi, students. How are you today? Hi, teacher. Hi, Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. teacher. Okay. You? Okay, are you hungry? No, I'm not hungry. No, you're hungry. Not hungry. Oh, let's talk about breakfast today. Oh, okay, American wow. breakfast. Okay, what do you have today for breakfast this morning? I wasn't hungry. I didn't eat okay. anything. Well, let's talk about American breakfast. Nothing. American breakfast. What do they eat? Uh, I'm going to explain this next. What about you? I don't like to eat breakfast, teacher. Nothing? Nothing. Oh, it's so hard. Teacher, I have no food at all. Nothing? Oh, oh my oh. God. And what about you? Just a uh, 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 coffee. Just coffee. Just coffee. Okay, let's, let's talk about American <laughs> breakfast. Okay, here's the table. We got here. Come on. Oh. We got bacon. Wow. Eggs. Wow. Cheers. <laughs> Great. <laughs> what do you have? Oh, a cupcake. Okay. Wow. May, may I eat it? Yes. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's really good. How far is this? Oh, my God. I just eat the pancake with me. Yes, of course. Yeah, with me. Yeah, bacon. What yeah. is this, teacher? What is this? Oh, this is Cheerios. 
have the chance to increase the grade. Good. And last but not least. You're going to stay there? Okay. That's fine. Can everyone see them? Yes.
the uh, group dynamics. That was the last part of what you were to read. Um, and the ways in which group dynamics can affect um, sort of the entire class, whether they're good or bad, can cause how the direction, influence the direction in which everything goes. So um, these are the different things that they had outlined. And I want to be sure that you understand what all of those mean. And then we'll do a quick activity with those before we go into some example grammar exercises. So the first one was learning about each other. Does everyone understand what that one means? Making sure that everybody in the class knows some, something about everyone else. Um, because then they're less likely to sort of form those kinds of groups that they tend to. Proximity, contact, and interaction. What is that one about? <coughs> Working together. What is proximity? Physical distance. Physical distance. Actually, getting them together, um, right, and giving them a chance to interact with each other. Yeah. Um, shared history. Tell your history. Tell history. Tell about yourself. Not just about yourself, though. Some some kind of happening. Something that happened to the group as a whole. Okay, so maybe everybody had some particular experience. Maybe you took them to have a particular experience, but it should be some sort of experience that everybody has in common. Okay, right? Rewards, of course, they love to get cookies, whether real or imaginary. And grades. Um, group legend. What about that one? The group has a name, so if you break your students into groups, they give themselves an identity, okay? They come up with a group name or an idea, okay? Public commitment. What was that one? Public commitment. They have to have tasks, and uh, they, they have to, to work together, uh, because uh, you, you have to, to give tasks for everybody, but public means outside, outside, outside class. Outside class. Outside For me, class. this one meant um, how they display their membership in the group or the class to others. Okay, um, so maybe they um, they all have a ta uh, like an English speaking table in the cafeteria one day, and they all talk about the, how they belong to the English class group. Or they make t-shirts that say, I'm in English 101, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Something to identify themselves to the outside students who are not in the class, right? Investing in the group. The effort of each one. Effort of each one, yeah. Extracurriculars. Oh, other activities. Other activities outside of the classroom. So some of you guys had some interesting, funny ideas a few weeks ago about like a class, like a sleepover at the slumber party at the teacher's house or going on a camping trip or whatever. It doesn't have to be that big, but that's the sort of thing we're yes, talking they about. They did. I saw some people yes, went to Baltimore. Yes, they, 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 no, they, were, they had to go to, to watch them. We we have, we, oh, you we went to the Super Bowl. We were supposed to analyze the, the ads during the Super, Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Oh, fun. The yeah. yeah but <laughs> the best <laughs> home of all. Yes, you see it. And the big <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. The best home Which class? Film class? Film class? Film class? Film class? Film class? Film class? That's, that's a great. That's a wonderful. I like that. Um, goal cooperation. Goal cooperation. Everybody working to the same goal. Everybody working to the common goal. Yeah. Intergroup competition. This can be good and bad. It's got two sides. Intergroup. Yeah. Difficult. What is it? What is it though? First, besides it's good or it works or it's difficult, what is it? Yeah, breaking them up into smaller groups and having them compete against each other, right? When done well, that it can be helpful to bring them all together. Joint hardship. Yeah, if you've done something difficult together, 
Yeah, okay, if the whole group has had some difficult experience in common, um, that can help to sort of make them gel. And teacher role model should be pretty self-explanatory, yeah? Okay, so all of these things can um, <clears throat> help to create a cohesive group unit. Um, and you want to kind of think about, don't be super teacher and try to do all 12 of these at once, because that's like impossible, but you know, choosing and selectively. Um, so this time I would like you to think about, <clears throat> I'm going to assign you one, and I'm going to have your group, instead of doing a scene, you're going to create a still photograph. That means each person in the group is going to do a pose that they will hold so that I can take a picture of it, okay? Um, I will assign you one this time. The pictures will go onto the website, okay? So <clears throat> you'll get to see yourselves. So um, I would like to see um, this group up here uh, come up with a still picture for group legend. Group legend, okay? Um, I want this group here to come up with a, um, a, a still photograph for proximity contact interaction. And I want this group to do um, intergroup competition. And I want this group to do rewards. And I want this group to do teacher
You may work with a partner, you don't have to do it by yourself.
Um, I, I put um, a link to a site that has approximately 500 of these printable ones. Um, and they're they're arranged by subject matter. So I, this one I chose was like describing people. So they do have it broken down into categories. Um, so that's up there for you guys. So hopefully, do you, have you seen these before? No. Really? They're a huge thing here for kids in the United States. Like you play these when you're a kid. And then you, inevitably your students will probably try to write down all the dirty words that they know and they'll just get it out of their system. <clears throat> All right, next, Jeopardy. Um, I had talked about this with um, Moisa, but I think it's fun for everybody. So moving on to the next idea is Jeopardy. Um, everybody has a whiteboard at their table and a paper towel to erase and a marker, okay? Um, so this is kind of something that works as intergroup competition, but it's also a good way to review um, a concept or a lesson. Um, hold on, I have to open it. It's a separate slideshow. Okay. okay. Um, so Jeopardy is just a, like a, it's a TV show. I don't know if you have it in Brazil, but it's like a quiz type show. Um, so the Jeopardy game we're going to play is for uh, present tense verbs, okay? Um, and I have this template up on the website also. Um, if you have a template, it's really easy because all you have to put in is the categories and the questions. You don't have to design the whole PowerPoint. This is just a PowerPoint presentation, but it doesn't seem like it when you're playing it. Now, because this is just an example, um, I've only filled in the questions that are worth 10 points, okay? So please don't choose S or no S for 40 points because there's no question there. Um, only choose the 10 points, but you will get to choose the category. So um, S or no S uh, is going to be if it's third person singular in the present tense, um, do they understand when they're supposed to add the S and when they do not add the S? Okay. Um, which word, they will have a choice of a couple different verbs, and you get to choose which verb makes the most sense in the blank. Okay. Um, make a sentence is I will give you a verb, and you have to make a sentence in the present tense. Okay. Um, present progressive, you'll be constructing <coughs> the present progressive form, and I will give you the verb. And then wild card is a question, like I, it's a category that could be about anything, something else besides present tense verbs, okay? Now, you can split them up into groups however you like. Um, sometimes I just have everyone write down the answer at the same time. You could also have the team that selected write the answer and get the points, but have the other teams be ready to steal the points if this team is wrong, for example. Um, so there are a couple ways you can structure the points, but for now we will have everyone playing. So choose someone at your table who has good handwriting and give them the whiteboard and the marker. Okay, so decide who's got the best handwriting. Give them the marker and the pen. Yes. Do you know a medicine for sore cancer? Canker sores? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. I'll write it down for you after class. Remind me after class. You have to write it down there with the answer. Yeah. So you're going to write the answer on your board and hold your board up when you think you have the answer. Okay? Are you ready? All right, let's have this group in the back. Choose a category. Which category would you like? Which word? Which word? Okay, for 10 points, which word? Okay, here's your question. Which word goes in the blank? Maya blank the piano. No, don't tell me. Write it down. Write it on your paper. Write it down on your whiteboard and hold it up. Okay. Okay, the correct answer is plays, if you got it right. Now you click this little button to go back 
to the game board, the one down in the corner, okay? Uh, let's have this group over here choose a category. Make a sentence for 10, okay. Here we go, R write it down, don't yell it out. Write a present tense sentence using the verb drink. like the cat drinks milk, it's one time, yeah, and some of you had like, I drink water every day, okay, so you could talk now about the differences between a one-time occurrence and everyday type of occurrence. All right, how about this group? S or no S? S or no S? S or no S? Jim, take the bus to work every day. Take or takes? Take, take or takes? The cat, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> okay, the correct answer is takes. Oh, you guys are geniuses. Oh. All right, there's only a couple left. Wild card. Wild card. Let's see what it is. What is one adjective you might use to describe this person? Mm, ooh. Ah. <laughs> ah, okay. So we had elegant, tall, skinny, and fashionable. Fashionable. Fashionated. Fashionable. Yes. Good. And the last one, present progressive. Fashionate is what to say? Hey, write a sentence in the present progressive using this verb. Juliana, glasses right now, using the verb to wear, okay? You can just put the verb, it's okay. Oh, is wearing, excellent, very good, very good, nice job. Now, um, a lot of times this, this template does not have it built in, but you can have a final jeopardy, which is where the teams may decide to bet all or some of their points, okay? So this would be like kind of a tiebreaker. If you have a tie between teams, you can give them a tiebreaker type question and they can choose how many of their points they want to bet, okay? Because all of you right now have 50 points. So if you want to have one winning team, that's a good way to do it. They have to think strategically about how confident they feel. They can bet nothing. They can bet zero, okay? Um, so it, it's, a, it's a good way to sort of get one ultimate winner if you have a prize especially, okay? So that's how Jeopardy works. Um, I had talked to some of you about it and it seems like maybe you didn't know this game. Is this a game that exists in Brazil? Yes. Yes, yes. okay. Yeah. Similar. Similar. Similar, okay. Which program do you this is just PowerPoint. It's just a, a series of different um, slides, okay? And they're linked together. So this one here, um, the template for this is on the website. So all you have to do um, is change the headings and change the questions and answers, okay? There's, um, so it's up there for you so that you have it, okay? Okay, so Jeopardy. <clears throat> Way backwards, so I... Come on. Okay, next. <coughs> Many of you play hot potato. Yeah. 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 Um, so for, have you ever done it where it's grammar hot potato? Oh. No? No. So with this, um, you set a timer. The nice thing about hot potato is that it's not necessarily linked to having the correct answer. It's kind of random as to who goes out. It's whoever's holding the potato um, when the timer goes off. 
So if there are students who are afraid of giving the wrong answer, um, it's not necessarily linked to that. It's only linked to the timer. So they can feel like it's kind of random. Um, so the idea is to just give a category. So for example, like adjectives. Okay, um, and then you set the timer, and you have to list an adjective before passing it on. Um, so, for example, I might say cute. Oops. <laughs> and I say another adjective. Yep. Good. Beautiful. Lovely. Nice. Cute. Intelligent. Handsome. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So you get the idea, but there's a timer running. Okay. You can decide too if you want to make it more listening based. If you have someone who repeats a word, you might kick them out. Um, that's up to you. You can kind of put different challenges in. Right. Um, verb and adverb charades. Do you know what charades are? Acting things out. Okay. So we're we're just gonna have a little fun here. I'm gonna give you a slip of paper and write a verb or an adverb on the paper, okay? I'm just going to throw some on the table. You can do one or more than we one. Can't choose. You can choose a verb or an adverb. Write down, write down a verb or an adverb. That's it. Oh, 
show them a video. Okay, so in your groups, I would like you to decide on a superpower that you would like to have. Okay? Um, and what you will look like. You can use the whiteboard if you want to, but I would like you to write a physical description of your X-Man, the power that they have, and draw a shield or weapon for your X-Man that demonstrates their power. Okay? Do you know what a shield is? Yes. Okay, so um, this is going to be your group mascot. So kind of like they did handy women, the same idea, only you're going to have a superpower instead and you're going to describe what your character is like. So think about maybe a superpower that um, tells us something about your whole group or is a common goal that all of you might have. Um, and I'll just give you about five minutes to do this. You're not going to take a lot of time to decide what power what they're going to look like, and write a description of what the power is and draw a shield. Got it? Yes or no? I'm seeing some confused yeah, yeah. faces. Yeah. Who's got it? Got it? All right, go. Five minutes. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> and intelligent. All right, so they would like to be like Wolverine. All right, very good. Now, in, in another convenient, if your students decide they're, you know, they're getting a little bit of attitude, you can always, you know, send your claws yes, out. Yeah. So yeah, that's a bonus. Okay. Next. Um, okay, I think I said that next in my name. Okay. He's a really wild man. So he's short, ugly, shy, and pale. He has a big scar in his face because of he fought in war against evil creatures. He developed this power of healing with his healing web. So he can, you would like to be able to heal others. Heal. All right, good. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> and next, I saw you guys. Why would you like to be invisible? Ah, so maybe we can go anywhere. <laughs> go anywhere. Go and what? You can be anywhere. You can be anywhere and no one knows. Hearing all those secret conversations. Yeah. Good. All right. And this group. Uh, this is the oh. super brain. Oh. <laughs> this boy likes to study a lot. He really loves to study. So uh, he has the superpower of keeping everything he learns. So he is good at English, at chemistry, at math, at painting, biology, everything. He's perfect. And obviously, his shield is a book. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, so we also discover hidden talents when we do some video sharing. Right now we know that Tatiana is an amazing artist as well yeah. as being a good teacher. So <laughs> last but not least. <laughs> uh, this is a storm. He can change he, she can change the web. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, very nice. Thank you for sharing. Um, you can do this with lots of different ideas, obviously. This works really well if you do it at the beginning of the year. Um, but it's also important, as we talked about previously, to be sure you're encouraging different groupings as well. So your X-Men shouldn't always stick together. Try to mix them up a little, too. Um, it's, it, if you use a permanent something, like, a, like one of these, and have them actually spend some time drawing it out, um, you can put them up around the classroom as decorations, um, but also, you know, kind of call them back to these groups every once in a while, and they can go near wherever their picture is hanging, so that's a kind of an easy grouping strategy also. And moving on, we have just one more thing before we start talking about what comes next. Celebrity biography. Okay, now some of you talked about like how do I do inductive grammar teaching? Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to give you a short biography about. I hear this guy named Ronaldo is pretty famous. <laughs> so this is about Ronaldo. Okay, um, and you are going to. There are two. No, not Ronaldino. Ronaldo. So, um, I would like you to find the verbs, okay? Underline all of the verbs first in the paragraph, then rewrite them down here under number two, and then I want you to see if you notice anything that is the same about all or most of these verbs, okay? You can work with a partner or you can work alone. This is your choice for this one.
will not take you long. It will take your students longer. You don't know what past tense is yet, right? Because I haven't taught you. This is inductive, right? So <clears throat> you probably don't know that. So think about what do you see that is the same for every single one of these. 